Next topic is lymphoid malignancies. These are neoplastic conditions of lymphocytes. And if the bone marrow and blood involvement is more, then it is called lymphoid leukemia. Whereas when the lymph nodes or extra nodal sites are involved, it is called lymphoma. Historically, the lymphoid tumors are classified based on the clinical syndromes. For example, lymphomas are classified according to Rappaport, Keel or working formulation systems. Acute leukemias according to French, American, British classification system. Hodgkin's disease according to Rye classification. But WHO has proposed a unified classification for all lymphoid malignancies. The new classification by WHO takes into account the cell of origin that is T cells or B cells, the maturation stage that is precursors or mature cells. But let's now try to understand the clinically relevant understanding of lymphoid malignancies. The first subheading is chronic lymphoid leukemias or lymphomas. This includes chronic lymphocytic leukemias or small lymphocytic lymphoma, pro-lymphocytic leukemias, large granular lymphocytic leukemia, hairy cell leukemia. In patients with CLL, approximately 99% of them are B cell whereas only 1% is T cell. Pro-lymphocytic leukemias, 90% are B cells, whereas 10% are T cells. In large granular lymphocytic leukemias, 80% are natural killer cells and 20% are T cells. Whereas hairy cell leukemia, approximately 99 to 100% of the patients are of B cell origin. Second subtype is indolent lymphoma. First one under this is follicular center cell lymphoma grades 1 and 2 lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma or Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia marginal zone lymphoma This includes extra nodal that is maltoma, nodal that is monocytoid B cell lymphoma, splenic marginal zone lymphoma and cutaneous T cell lymphoma, it is also called mycosis fungoids. Let's look at the percentage cell of origin. For follicular center cell lymphoma, it is 100% B cell origin. For lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma, that is again 100% of B cell origin. For marginal zone lymphoma, again it is 100% of B cell origin, whereas cutaneous T cell lymphoma is 100% T cell origin. The next type is aggressive 
lymphoma these include diffuse large b cell lymphoma follicular center cell lymphoma grade 3 mantle cell lymphoma primary mediastinal or thymic large b cell lymphoma burkitt like lymphoma peripheral t cell lymphoma angio immunoblastic lymphoma angio centric lymphoma intestinal t cell lymphoma anaplastic large cell lymphoma again let's look at the cell of origin for diffuse large cell lymphoma it is 85% of b cell origin whereas 15% which is t cell origin for follicular central grade 3 it is 100% b cell origin for mantle lymphoma it is 100% b cell origin again mediastinal or thymic large b cell again it is 100% b cell origin burkitt like is again 100% b cell peripheral t cell is 100% t cell angio immunoblastic is again 100% t cell angio centric is 80% t cell and 20% natural killer cells intestinal t cell is again 100% t cell whereas anaplastic is 70% t cell and 30% null cell the next is acute lymphoid leukemia or lymphomas these include precursor lymphoblastic leukemia burkitt's leukemia or lymphoma adult t cell leukemia or again lymphoma burkitt lymphoma is 100% b cell origin adult t cell is 100% t cell origin and precursor lymphocytic leukemia is 80% t cell and 20% b cell origin next type is plasma cell disorders these are all of 100% b cell origin these include monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance or m gus solitary plasma cytoma extra medullary plasma cytoma multiple myeloma and plasma cell leukemia next is hodgkin's lymphoma these are all again b cell of origin these include lymphocyte predominant nodular sclerosis mixed cellularity and lymphocyte depleted okay so now let's look at the etiology of lymphoid malignancies most of the cases have unknown etiology there are a few genetic alterations that are characteristic of certain malignancies for example burkitt's lymphoma has a translocation of 8 to 14 follicular lymphoma has a translocation of 14 to 18 mantle cell lymphoma has a translocation of 11 to 14 anaplastic large cell lymphoma has a translocation of 2 to 5 diffuse large cell lymphoma has a mutation of bcl6 on 3q27 chromosome most cases have a translocation involving insertion of distant chromosome or chromosome segment into 
antigen receptor genes which can either be immunoglobulin or T cell receptors. Let's look at the other etiologies of lymphoid malignancies. There are three viruses which are implicated in certain lymphoid malignancies. The first one is Epstein Barr virus. Second one is human herpes virus 8 and the third one is human T cell lymphotropic virus type 1. Epstein-Barr virus and human herpes virus 8 belong to herpes virus family and HTLV type 1 is a retrovirus. Epstein-Barr virus has been strongly associated with African Burkitt lymphoma, mixed cellularity, Hodgkin's disease, angiocentric lymphoma, HHV 8 in patients with coexisting AIDS can cause a peculiar type of lymphoma called body cavity lymphomas. HTLV type 1 is associated with adult T cell leukemia which has endemic occurrence in southwestern Japan and the Caribbean. Other viruses that are implicated in formation of lymphoid malignancies include Helicobacter pylori which is associated with lymphoma of gastric mucosa associated lymphoid tissue and even gastric large cell lymphoma and hence eradication of H. pylori in such patients can induce durable remissions. There are a few other mucosa associated lymphoid tissue lymphomas that are associated with certain organisms. These include ocular adnexa which is associated with chlamydia cetaci, small intestine with campylobacter jejuni and skin with borrelia and a few autoimmune conditions that are associated with lymphomas include Jogren's that causes salivary gland lymphoma Hashimoto's thyroiditis can cause thyroid lymphomas. An interesting point to note is lymphoma is 17 times more common in patients with HIV and there is an increased incidence in patients who are meat workers and farmers. Hodgkin's disease is increased in patients with woodworking occupation history. Let's now look at the diagnosis and staging of lymphoid malignancy. The first is excision biopsy. This is the gold standard investigation of choice. However, there should be adequate tissue sample. The tissue sample is subjected to three tests. The first one among them is light microscopy where the pattern of growth and morphologic features are studied. Second is flow cytometry where the immunophenotype is assessed and the third is genetic studies when it is subjected to DNA testing and cytogenetics. One important thing to note is needle aspirates or extra nodal masses are not adequate to come to a diagnosis. The diagnosis and staging of leukemia and lymphoma includes bilateral iliac 
crest bone marrow sampling including biopsies and aspiration prognosis in acute leukemia the peripheral blood blast count peripheral blood blast count is the most important indicator whereas when looking at the chronic lymphoid malignancies or chronic leukemia peripheral rbc's and platelet count is important non hodgkins lymphoma have five important clinical prognostic factors these include advancing age of more than 60 years an increased serum lactate dehydrogenase levels an advanced stage a hemoglobin of less than 12 gram percent and involvement of more than four nodal sites out of these the advanced age that is more than 60 years increased serum ldh and advanced stage are shared by indolent and aggressive lymphomas and hemoglobin of less than 12 and involvement of more than four nodal sites is seen in follicular lymphoma and these confer a poor prognosis in myeloma the serum para protein levels the serum creatinine levels beta 2 microglobulin levels all these three predict the survival the next topic in lymphoid malignancies is chronic lymphoid leukemia this usually presents as asymptomatic lymphocytosis in patients who are more than 60 years of age the malignant cell is a cd5 positive b cell which on microscopy looks like normal small lymphocytes most common genetic abnormalities seen with cll include trisomy 12 deletion of 13q 11q and 17p the staging system used is rai and binet staging system the prognosis is mainly determined by the bone marrow malignant cell load cells can infiltrate bone marrow lymph nodes and spleen when they infiltrate the node they express a type of adhesion molecule and this molecule allows the cells to remain in the node and reduces the peripheral blood circulation these patients also have hypo gamma globulinemia and around 20% of these patients have autoimmune antibodies that may cause autoimmune hemolytic anemia or intercurrent illnesses in 5% of the patients the disease evolves into an aggressive form that is called richer syndrome which is refractory to treatment there are a few subsets of chronic lymphoid leukemia which may exist based on whether the immunoglobulin expressed by tumor cells contain mutations or retain germ line sequence the cells that contain mutations are more indolent and carry good prognosis whereas the cells that retain the germ line sequence are more aggressive and have poor response to therapy
along with this CD38 positive tumor cells also have poor prognosis an intracellular tyrosine kinase called ZAP70 is present in an aberrant form in 45% of CLL cases and this is also of prognostic value ZAP70 positive cases require treatment usually within 3 to 4 years of diagnosis whereas ZAP negative cases usually require treatment within 8 to 11 years following diagnosis. Let's now look at the Rye and Binet staging for CLL which gives the relation between the staging of a B cell CLL and the prognosis or survival. Let's divide it into stage clinical features and survival in RAI stage 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Clinical features seen in stage 0 is lymphocytosis. In stage 1 it is lymphocytosis plus adenopathy. In stage 2 it is lymphocytosis plus splenomegaly. In stage 3 patients have anemia and stage 4 the patients have thrombocytopenia. Median survival in stage 1 is 12 years, in stage 2 it is 9 years, stage 3 it is 7 years, stage 4 is 1 to 2 years and stage 5 is also 1 to 2 years. In Binet staging there is stage A, B and C. Stage A is no anemia or thrombocytopenia and less than 3 sites are involved. Here the median survival is more than 10 years. Binet stage B, there is no anemia or thrombocytopenia and more than 3 sites are involved and here the median survival is more than 5 years and stage C, that is patients have anemia plus or minus thrombocytopenia and here the survival drastically reduces to 2 years. Let's now look at the treatment for chronic lymphoid leukemia. As a general rule, supportive care is given until the patient develops anemia or thrombocytopenia. At this time where the anemia develops, patients should be subjected to the tests to find out the cause for anemia or thrombocytopenia. In patients with anemia or thrombocytopenia due to peripheral destruction, these patients can be treated with splenectomy or glucocorticoid therapy without cytotoxic therapy. If marrow replacement is the root cause, then cytotoxic therapy is indicated. Cytotoxic therapy involves infusion of fludarabin in the dosing of 25 mg per meter square of body surface area per day given IV. It is given for 5 days every 4 weeks once. This induces response in around 75% of the patients but complete response is seen only in 50% of the patients. The other therapy is giving rituximab which is given in the dosing of 375 to 500 milligrams per meter square of body surface area on day 1. Fludarabin 25 milligrams per meter square on days 2 to 4 on cycle 1 and days 1 to 3 on subsequent cycles and cyclophosphamide 250 milligrams per meter square given along with Fludarabin. This regimen is called as FCR regimen and it induces complete response in up to 70% of the patients but it is associated with severe myelotoxicity. Glucocorticoids generally increase the risk of infections 
and does not have substantial anti-tumor benefit. Another important medication is Ibrutinib, which is a Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitor. This tyrosine kinase is found to be highly active in CLL and Ibrutinib is also used as a primary therapy or first line medication. Other agents include alkylating agents including bendamustin and chlorambucil are also used as anti-tumor agents. A BCL2 inhibitor called venetoclax is also used. Monthly IVIG infusions can reduce the risk of infections but it is expensive and it is reserved only for patients with serious infections. Most of the patients are treated with palliative intent. Young patients are treated aggressively and are subjected to high dose therapies, autologous or allogenic bone marrow transplant as this increases the survival. Monoclonal antibodies used in CLL include anti-CD52, anti-CD20, anti-CD19 and 22. Examples of anti-CD52 is alemtuzumab. For anti-CD20 it is rituximab, obinutuzumab and ofatumumab. For anti-CD19 and 22, CAR T therapy that is chimeric antigen receptors T cell therapy is trialed. The next topic that we look at is indolent lymphomas. So these are the conditions that have a natural history that is measured in years and not months. So there is progression that happens within years, not in months. The median survival is usually more than 14 years. Let's look at the first one of this, that is follicular lymphoma. Follicular lymphoma is one of the most common of indolent lymphomas and accounts for up to 33% of all indolent lymphomas. This follicular lymphoma presents usually as a painless peripheral lymphadenopathy and usually involves several lymph node regions. B symptoms such as fever, sweats that is night sweats and weight loss are seen in about 10% of patients and less common when compared to Hodgkin's lymphoma. In about 25% of the cases, the lymph nodes waxes and wanes before patient seeks medical attention. The median age of follicular lymphoma is 55 years and the disease is usually widespread by the time the patient comes to the doctor in about 85% of the cases. So the extranodal sites that are commonly involved include liver and bone marrow. The tumor has a follicular or nodular growth pattern. Translocation of 14 and 18 chromosome is present in 85% of cases and this results in the over expression of BCL2 which is a protein that is involved in prevention of programmed cell death. 
that is apoptosis. This increase in BCL2 level increases the inhibition of apoptosis and hence increases the risk of tumor growth. The normal lymph node follicular center B cell usually actively undergoes mutation. This mutation is to develop immunoglobulin variable regions that is to create antibodies with higher affinity to selecting antigens. The follicular lymphoma cells also undergo a lot of mutation. This leads to accumulation of genetic damage. Now when these lymphomas accumulate damages such as mutated P53, this leads to a rapid growth of the cells and also transformation into diffuse large B cell lymphoma which is an aggressive lymphoma that is refractory to therapy. So most of the patients who have mortality related to follicular lymphoma usually have this histologic transformation. This histologic transformation occurs at about 3% per year and it is not related to treatment in fact and in fact it has reduced with introduction of therapy. There is a prognostic scoring for follicular lymphoma called Follicular Lymphoma International Prognostic Index 2 written as FLIPI 2 in short. This scoring involves 5 clinical risk factors. The first one is age more than 60 years. Second one is increased serum beta 2 microglobulin levels. Third is hemoglobin of less than 12 gram percent. Fourth is bone marrow involvement. And a fifth that is longest diameter of the largest node more than 6 centimeters. If zero factors are present then that is low risk. If 1 to 2 factors are present that is medium or moderate risk. If 3 to 5 factors are present that is high risk. Let's look at the 5 year progression free survivals. At low risk it is 76 to 80 percent. At moderate risk it is 49 to 51 percent and at high risk it is just 20 to 37 percent. Treatment for follicular lymphoma. At the time of diagnosis around 85 percent of the patients have advanced disease which leaves around 15 percent of the patients with localized disease. These patients are usually followed up and assessed for progression but other therapies include single agent alkylators, nucleoside analogs, this includes fludarabin, cladribine, combination therapies, radiation therapy, biologic agents, including interferon alpha, monoclonal antibodies such as rituximab. The good thing is more than 90% of the patients are responsive to therapy and about 50 to 75% of the patients show complete response when treated aggressively. Patients treated with R-CHOP that is rituximab cyclophosphamide, 
Dorxorubicin and Vincristin along with prednisone has a median remission of around 6 years. Next we will look at aggressive lymphomas. These are the conditions where untreated cases have a median survival of less than 6 months and if untreated most of the patients again die within a span of 1 year from diagnosis. If the mediastinal nodes are involved in these patients, it may produce superior vena cava syndrome or it can also cause pericardial tamponade. If retroperitoneal nodes are involved, they can cause obstructive uropathy. Abdominal lymph nodes, if they are involved, they can cause abdominal pain, ascites or even obstruction of the GI tract or perforation also. If CNS is involved, then the patients can have confusion, cranial nerve palsies, headache, seizures and even spinal cord compression. If bones are involved, patients can have pathologic fractures and about 45% of the patients have B symptoms that is fever plus sweats and weight loss. However, patients can also be asymptomatic leading to a delay in diagnosis. Among the aggressive lymphoma, the most common diagnosis is diffuse large B cell lymphoma. This accounts for up to 35 to 45 percent of patients. The aggressive lymphoma itself accounts for approximately 60 percent of all lymphomas. About 85 percent of the patients with aggressive lymphoma have mature B cell origin and about 15 percent of them have post thymic T cell origin. Let's look at the approach to a patient with aggressive lymphoma. Early diagnostic biopsy is very crucial. Patients with Waldeyer's ring involved should undergo extensive evaluation of GI tract. Patients with bone or bone marrow involvement should undergo lumbar puncture to evaluate for CNS involvements. The treatment of aggressive lymphoma is broadly categorized into localized disease and advanced disease. Localized aggressive lymphomas are usually treated with four cycles of CHOP and if required radiation can also be given. CHOP consists of C that is cyclophosphamide, H that is hydroxy donorubicin or also called doxorubicin, O that is oncovin that is a brand name for vincristin, P for prednisone. When treated with this regimen, around 85% of the patients have a remission or cure. Studies have shown that instead of radiation, if rituximab is used, the remission rates are higher. This regimen is called R-CHOP, where R is rituximab, C is cyclophosphamide, H is hydroxydonorubicin or also called as doxorubicin, O is oncovin or vincristin and P is prednisone. For advanced disease, there is a lot of debate regarding the choice of therapy, but the most accepted one is 6 cycles of R-CHOP therapy. 
this has a cure rate of about two thirds that is about 66 percent other therapies that are used for advanced disease include epoch therapy epoch regimen which has dose adjusted etoposide prednisone vincristin cyclophosphamide and doxorubicin in patients with cmic or bcl6 mutations also called double hit mutations epoch plus rituximab regimen is preferred patients who do not achieve cure undergo a high dose therapy and also undergo autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation one important complication especially in bulky lymphomas is tumor lysis syndrome and if tumor lysis syndrome is present it is usually treated with hydration allopurinol rasburicase and correction of electrolytes there is an international prognostic index for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. This includes five clinical factors to provide risk stratification and these include age more than 60 years, an elevated serum lactate dehydrogenase levels and arbor staging of stage 3 or 4, more than one site of extra nodal involvement. an eastern cooperative oncology group or ECOG group performance status of more than or equal to 2. Next we we'll look at acute lymphoid leukemias or ALL in short. These leukemias are more common in children than in adults. In children, most cases are of B cell origin, whereas in adults, most cases of acute lymphoblastic leukemia and lymphoblastic lymphomas have thymic origin with a very few cells of B cell origin. Clinical features usually include features of marrow failure such as anemia, thrombocytopenia, increased risk of infections. Patients can also present with hepatosplenomegaly and adenopathy. In men, there can be testicular enlargement, laboratory abnormalities can include increased lactate dehydrogenase levels, anemia, hyponatremia, hypokalemia, a very high peripheral blood blast count and even thrombocytopenia. The diagnosis of ALL requires at least 20% lymphoblasts in bone marrow. and adverse or poor prognosis is seen in patients with age more than 35 years, very high total leukocyte count or lymphocyte count on presentation, presence of translocation between 9 and 22nd chromosome, presence of translocation between 1 and 19th chromosome and translocation of 4 and 11th chromosome also confer a poorer prognosis in the patient. Treatment of acute lymphoid leukemia involves intensive induction phase, CNS prophylaxis and maintenance therapy which is extended for a period of 2 years in most cases. Agents that are commonly used include vincristin, 
एल एस्पराजनीस साइटाराबेन डॉनोरोबिसन फ्रेडनिसोन फॉर सी एन एस प्रोफेलैक्सिस एन इंट्रा थीकल मेथोट्रेक्सेट इज यूज इंस्टेड ऑफ दिस इवन हाई डोज मेथोट्रेक्सेट कैन बी गिवन सिस्टमिकली केसेस ऑफ रिलैप्स कैन बी ट्रीटेड विथ बोन मैरो ट्रांसप्लांटेशन However, the cure rates are quite low, with about 30 percent. With this therapy, a long-term survival can be achieved in up to 60 to 65 percent of the patients. Next, let's look at Burkitt's lymphoma. Even this is more common in children. It is associated with translocations involving C mic. gene that is present on 8th chromosome usually rearranging with heavy chains or light immunoglobulin chains clinical features include large abdominal mass hepatomegaly adenopathy and disseminated disease treatment involves resection of large masses chemotherapy involves codox m regimen and even bfm regimen is also accepted a cure is obtained in about 50 to 60% of the patients codox m is cyclophosphamide oncovin that is vincristin dox that is doxorubicin and m is methotrexate and bfm is berlin frankfurt munster protocol the next topic is adult t cell lymphoma or leukemia this is a rare subtype of lymphoma and patients who are infected with htlv1 virus approximately 2% of these infected patients undergo leukemic transformation unrelated to the adult t cell lymphoma some patients with htlv1 virus infection can have spinal involvement leading to spastic paraplegia a characteristic clinical feature of adult t cell lymphoma is high wbc count high lymphocyte count with no anemia the tumor cells are cd4 positive t cells with cloven hoof or flower shaped nuclei almost all patients develop hypercalcemia due to increased cytokine productions by the tumor cells treatment for adult t cell leukemia glucocorticoids for hypercalcemia a palliative route involves treatment with zidovudin or interferon other options include lenalidomide and mogamulizumab which is an anti ccr4 receptor antibody both of these are found to have anti tumor activity 